Hello, this is um, a project from the University of Adelaide of Who Killed Osama Bin Laden, and I am Ashley Soroka. Uh, the introduction to the history about the Osama Bin Laden is that he was found on the 1st of December in 1948. Uh, he was found in Somerton Beach, South Australia. He is to this day identified and his cause of death is still unknown. Um, there was a scrap of piece of paper that was found in his trousers that is a uh, Taham Shu translates to finished in English. Uh, it is also proved to be part of the Rubiat of Omar Kaham book. Um, it was also found at the back of this, this book. There was a mysterious code with four different lines and uh, there was a fifth line that was scratched out. So in this project, we did three different tasks. The first task was to eliminate various possibilities in relation to the mysterious code, which I showed before. Uh, we also used a mass spectrometer on different hair samples to compare strontium-88 levels. And we also analyzed how robust DNA can be by degrading a DNA sequence in software using MATLAB. The first task is involving this mysterious code. So using previous studies, are we going to assume that each letter of, the wo of, the, of this mysterious code is the first letter of a word? And we are assuming that the letters are a collective object, like horse names, Australian cities, etc. Um, the reason why we picked horse names is there was cir circumstantial evidence shows <coughs> that there was connection between Somerton Man and horse. Somerton Beach um, is near Morpheville Racecourse, which is a horse racing centre. That's where his body was found. And his body was also found by two horse jockeys. Uh, we used the website Trove to find the relevant horse name. Statistical testing <coughs> is how we proved or disproved if it were horse names. So we use a p-value test which is a, with the two-tailed t-test and our hypothesis was the group of letters are horse names and the, or, and the alternative hypothesis the group of letters are not horse names. Um, uh, here we, this is the result with uh, on the x-axis the English letters and the y is the uh, frequency of the letters. So as you can see here the correlation between the mysterious cone and the horse name is not that obvious with the blue being the mysterious code and the orange being the horse name. Uh, we also further proved this by doing a p-value test and we found it was lower than 0.05. So that uh, means that the null hypothesis is not accepted. Um, we, did a, we found that actually in Australian beach names that uh, the correlation was a bit better as you can see here. That the, um, the, we found the p-value was higher than 0.05 so it refers that it could possibly be a shown beach names, but we do need a bigger database to confirm this. Uh, the second task we did was using mass spectrometer. So um, what a mass spectrometer does, it just uh, measures a, a, a sample gets ablated in this case, and it uh, picks up the different isotope signatures of the sample. And the sample we use is a shaft in the head. Um, so we were finding uh, the level of strontium. The reason why is previous studies found there was high strontium in some of the man's hair. <coughs> and without further research, we found there was high strontium in Adelaide. <coughs> As you can see in the graph, that South Australia has a, or Adelaide, has a more strontium level than the rest of Australia. So we had five different samples. Um, as you can see on the table, uh, hair, uh, well, from our studies we found that hair approximately grows one centimeter per month. So we stuck the hair into a quartz slide rather than a glass slide because glass slide has a lot of impurities which would have affected the results. And we did a discrete ablation on the hair sample. So as you can see, hair one was, has been to Japan for nearly one week and uh, sample uh, hair A, or hair E, like that, has been to Bali for at least two weeks. <coughs> So knowing that hair grows one centimeter per month, we found uh, we could find the, the period of when they were overseas. So as you see in the purple box, sample A that was in Japan, you can see that that's about 2,000 micrometers of hair that was in Bali. And black, the black box, the bigger one, sample E that was in Bali, is about 4,000 micrometers. You can see that um, we ablated about one centimeter of hair. And if you look in the graph, uh, the black box, you can see that the strontium level in Bali is more significant than uh, than when it were in Adelaide. 
So um, this is opposing our initial assumption. Uh, and the y-axis is the, sh the strontium uh, level. So our conclusions, we, uh, we're not sore enough, so we need further investigations. And um, just in the next few slides, uh, the future work section that talks about what investigations are going to be done. Our first task involved DNA. So we've got uh, DNA is approximately 2 billion bits of information, and the SMP is what we're going to be removing from the DNA to seek to degrade it. <coughs> What we did, we sent uh, diff uh, a non different. Uh, we had volunteers to get the DNA tested. So we're going to be degrading the DNA by removing the SMPs we mentioned previously, and we're going to check for false positives and false negatives. And we're going to see how many SMPs can be removed before the DNA is identifiable. So this is our first test. We did a heritage test, as you can see on the top graph or pie chart. But the different uh, percentages of uh, heritage, and we removed the different SMPs. So if you see on the graph on the bottom, there's uh, the SMP removed from uh, zero to ninety percent. We did this test five times, and we averaged it. it it's just the plot on the bottom, and as you can see, at about fifty percent removal, we uh, there was about uh, error bar of about one percent difference, which has a big Significance, and that's so we're assuming that our conclusion here is that DNA becomes unreliable about 50%. With this, we did a second test, which is a false positive, false negative test. So, in the, if we had the original case of A, B, C, D, E, and a removed case to C, D, F, G, H, our false positive would be F, G, H, and because it's not in the original, and a false negative would be A, B, E, because it's not in the removed case. So you can see here that, <clears throat> that after 50% removal, that um, there was 30 false positives and negative. So in this case, this means that no matches were found. So at 50% removal of the SMPs, um, it was no matched, and we can further prove that DNA is unreliable or identifiable. So our conclusion, the DNA sequence will be highly unreliable apart from the degraded. Some of the demands of sentence can be found as long as the DNA sequence are proved to be at least half a match. Some of the demands, this could reveal where some of the demands came from. For future work, so for the first task, we could consider other group of names. We could also research on graphology, which is a study that can identify the writer by analyzing the handwritten, handwriting pattern. For the second task, we must the terminal. Measure the samples continuously instead of um, discreetly, and we can compare strontium levels in different places of Adelaide or different cities in Australia. Our DNA analysis, further analysis on more accurate reduction level DNA sequence to further prove the 50% degradation, and attempt to get some of the main DNA to undergo further testing. So, to summarize all our results, so the mysterious codes are unlikely to be horse names, but Australian BHFs and names have higher likelihood. Further strontium testing of hairs needs to establish if it can reveal the rival date in South Australia, and DNA appears to be highly unreliable when 50% of the SMPs are removed. Thank you for listening.